Hi there, the championship is finally back. And so with the new season starting, I thought I'd best get a prediction video in. So today I'm gonna to be running through my championship predictions from bottom to top. Now it looks like we're gonna have a pretty competitive championship this season. We've got three really strong teams coming up in the form of Sheffield Wednesday, Ipswich and Plymouth. We've then got three very strong teams coming down from the Premier League. Obviously they didn't have great seasons last year, but Leicester and Southampton, they've been in the Premier League for a long time now. They've got the experience to succeed in the championship, but can they keep hold of their Premier League squads? We've also got Leeds United, who now know what it takes to get out of the championship too. And of course there's many teams who are gonna be vying for the playoffs. So let's get into it. So starting at the bottom of the table, 24th, it kills me to do this, but I've put QPR here. Now QPR finished 20th last season. We narrowly avoided relegation to League One last season by six points. And with two wins from 27 keeping us up, it really did go down to the wire. The squad that we had last season simply wasn't good enough. And that squad's gradually been disassembled over the summer with the sales of Rob Dickey, Senny Diang, departures from squad players like Luke Amos, Stefan Johansson, Leon Balogun, Chris Martin. And I'm absolutely fine with that because the squad wasn't good enough and players needed moving on. But with the exception of Taylor Richards, who was on loan last season and is now permanent, we've only added four additional players. Begovic looks like a good bit of business on a free in goal. Paul Smith returns to QPR, having been let go two years ago on a free to late in Orient. And then we've signed two defenders, Ziad Larkesh at left back and Morgan Fox at centre back. My issue is the squad already looks so much lighter than last season and that was an incredibly injury prone Finn squad anyway. The football we're playing under 8 12 I just don't think is sustainable over a full championship season and we did lose 5 0 to Oxford in our last pre season match. I know you can't read anything into pre season, but that's just simply a score that shouldn't be happening a week before you play Watford away from home. It doesn't sound like there's going to be many more players coming in before Saturday, so I'm sticking QPR at the bottom. In 23rd, I've got Sheffield Wednesday. Obviously, Wednesday finished third in League One last season and went up via the playoffs. Now, the main reason I've put Wednesday down for relegation is shortly after winning promotion. Darren Moore was sacked. That in itself is a really bad start to preparing for life in the championship. That squad was running through walls for Darren Moore, and so the upheaval of that cause is going to be massive. They've brought in ex-Watford boss Zisco Munez, but there's only been one signing in the form of Rhys James, not that one. Rhys James from Blackpool. That leaves the squad a little bit light for me. We don't know how the team's going to shape up under Munez, so unfortunately I think it's relegation for Wednesday. At 22nd in our final relegation spot, I've got Rotherham. They finished 19th last season and would have been very happy to have avoided relegation. But there's been quite a few outgoings this summer, most notably Ogbeni to Luton. Grant Hall could be a decent addition for them at the back if he can stay fit. And although they did some good business in January, bringing in the likes of Jordan Hugill, business that I think really helped them stay up, I'm not sure with the outgoings that's going to be enough to keep them up this time. In 21st, I've gone for Cardiff City. They brought in Sabri Lamushi on a short-term contract in January, but interestingly, an agreement couldn't be reached to keep him at the club longer. I think that in itself is a bit of a dodgy sign. So instead, they brought in ex fernabachi manager Errol Bullock. So far, Cardiff have let go of six players and brought in five, the most notable additions being Aaron Ramsey and Carlin Grant, both of who could offer some really good experience for Cardiff this season. The issue is they're relying on frees and loan signings, and some of their key players were loan signings last season, and that's not really sustainable for a champion club to succeed so I can't see much improvement this season for Cardiff. In 20th I've got Huddersfield. The Terriers finished 18th last season and looked doomed for relegation until Neil Warnock came in to save the day. Now obviously what Warnock did was incredibly impressive and by this point just not at all surprising and they've managed to keep him out of retirement for the 10th time. The problem for me is this is a very different task. Warnock was stringing wins together on 25% 30% possession which is absolutely fine in a relegation battle but it's not sustainable over a full championship season. More than 10 players have left the club this summer. The issue is they've only brought in one replacement, Chris Maxwell from Blackpool on a free. Will that be enough to keep them up this time? I say yes, purely on Warnock alone, but I'm not sure they're gonna be able to play with their backs to the wall all season. In 19th, I've got Stoke City. Stoke finished 16th last season. The main thing for me here is that this is a season of transition for Stoke. They've let go of a lot of players this summer, and while six players have come through the door, half a dozen of the players that they've lost were actually first teamers. It's impossible to tell what replacing half of your team is going to do for your season but I'm not sure we can reasonably expect them all to hit the ground running. Daniel Johnson is a great addition though he's got years of championship experience and it will help to settle those new arrivals down. In 18th we have Preston North End. Now Preston finished 12th last season and they've actually only known top half table finishes since Ryan Lowe joined in 2021 but since 2020 as many of their signings have been loans as they have been permanents. Now that's just not sustainable for a club to continue to succeed and certainly not to push on higher to the playoffs. They've lost seven players and brought in five. 
One of the seven being Daniel Johnson, who I was just talking about. It looks like they brought in a couple of good loans from Liverpool in the form of Leighton Stewart and Calvin Ramsey. And they're looking to solve their lack of goals with the signing of Will Keane from Wigan. It looks like there's some financial restrictions that Preston are dealing with here, but it does seem to me there's quite a few key changes happening here, which is why I've placed them at 18th. At 17th, we have last year's League One champions, Plymouth. Now, Plymouth won League One last season with 101 points. With the way they stormed League One last season, I just don't think they're gonna be pushovers in the championship. There's a lot of change in the squad, but I think they've brought in some really intelligent signings. Julio Puegzelo from SC20 looks like a really good bit of business. Also looks like they got their business done nice and early, so plenty of time to prepare for the season. At 16th, we have Birmingham, who finished 17th last season. Now, Birmingham were obviously taken over this summer by American owners. It's gonna be John Eustace's second season in charge of Birmingham, and he's made some pretty decent signings this summer. Christian Bielik from Derby, Siriki Dembele from Bournemouth, both Ethan Laird from Man United and Tyler Roberts from Leeds, who were both on loan at QPR last season. Dion Sanson from Wolves joins on a permanent. All decent business and cheap, but the main question for me is, does it make them any better than they are? Laird struggled with injuries and form last season at QPR, and Tyler Roberts the same. So that might be my bias, but I'm just not sure that this takes them to the next level that they'll be looking to go. At 15th, I've got West Brom, who were 9th last season. Now, interestingly, West Brom have made no signings this summer, despite letting go of eight players. Now, I think Corbin's a really good manager, and he's definitely got the firepower needed for this league in the form of Jeb Wallace and Daryl Dyke. But the question is whether they can stay fit. Dyke has struggled with a couple of injuries now in his two seasons at West Brom, and I think that's really going to determine how this season plays out. On the basis that they've not reinforced the squad, and Dyke seems pretty fragile, I've gone for them at 15th. At 14th, I've picked Watford. Watford finished 11th last season, and it continued to be another merry-go-round of managers, the most notable sacking being Rob Edwards, who then turned up at rivals Luton and took him up to the Premier League. Now, there's a long list of outgoings for Watford, the most notable being João Pedro. You would expect Ken Semmer to be out the door by the end of the window too, but the recruitment inwards is just very uninspiring. Tom Ince from Reading, Jake Livermore, they're all right players, but not what you think Watford would need to make them playoff contenders. They're biggest enemies of themselves because realistically how long is new manager Valerian Ismail actually going to last? He only lasted six months at West Brom. I can't see much improvement here for Watford unfortunately. At 13th we've got Swansea who finished 10th last season. Now last season was a mixed bag. They had a really bad start, a good middle spell and then a pretty poor finish to the season. But they have brought in Michael Duff as new manager, who seems like a really good appointment. Obviously, he won League 2 with Cheltenham, and then he narrowly missed out on promotion to League 1 with Barnsley last season in their 1-0 loss to Sheffield Wednesday at Wembley. It makes total sense that Swansea have gone and grabbed him. Once again, Swansea have lost a few key players this summer. Ryan Manning on a free to Southampton. And there have been some additions. Josh Key from Exeter. Jerry Yates from Blackpool. But he is going to be a much more competitive league this season, I think. So I've gone for a slight drop to 13. At 12th, I've got Hull City. Hull finished 15th last season, which I think they'll have been pretty pleased with and they've got a really impressive record under Liam Rosinha who joined in November 22 having lost only six in 28 games since his arrival. The transfers in and out look pretty stable. They've kept hold of Tufan who's obviously a really key player for them and like I said for Swansea it's going to be a much more competitive league this season but I've got Hull to finish in the top half. At 11th we've got Norwich who finished 13th last season. Now this is a big rebuild for Norwich. Over 10 players let go, Timu Pucky being the most notable. Jack Stacey looks a good pick up from Bournemouth but there's just a lot of change happening this summer and so it's going to take time to to see how this team sells. Ashley Barnes and Shane Duffy have good experience at this level, but whether it's enough to push for the playoffs, I'm not so sure. At 10th, I've got Millwall, who finished 9th last season. Now, Millwall could have made the playoffs last year on the last day of the season, but they threw away a 3-1 lead to Blackburn at home, going on to lose 4-3, which kept both Blackburn and Millwall out of the playoff places. Now, I find Millwall interesting. They're a very strong, tight team. They had the fourth best defence last season, and the only three better defences were the three promoted teams. Now, having a strong defence is key to any league, but I get the sense that fans would like to see the shackles let a little bit more loose. They have signed a new striker in the form of Kevin Nisbet, which may indicate that they're looking to play two up front to help out Bradshaw. They've kept hold of Ian Fleming as well, who's a brilliant creative force for them. And really it's just a question of whether the four additions they've made are going to be enough to take them up to that next level. I think unfortunately there's going to be a lot more teams pushing for those playoff places this season. In number nine, I've got Ipswich. Ipswich finished second in League One last season on 98 points. But the main reason I've got them so high is I think they recruited players last season that have got championship experience and will do well at this level. Players like Massimo Longo, Connor Chaplin. They scored 101 goals last season as well, so I don't think they're going to be short on firepower. Kieran McKenna is a really exciting manager, and I can see him guiding them well clear of those relegation spots. In eighth, we have Bristol City. Now, Bristol City finished 14th last season, but I think over the last couple of windows, they've recruited really consistently. Mometi was a brilliant addition from Wickham Wanderers in January, 
a player I really wish that we'd actually signed. And I think he'll be getting more opportunities in this team. Naki Wells started to come into his own as well last season, and he still has the ability to succeed and be a consistent goal scorer at this level. Three out of their four signings are in defence. Rob Dickey joins from QPR, Rory McClory from Aberdeen, and Hayden Roberts from Brighton. I think as long as these defensive signings bed in well, they can take them up another level. At 7th, I have Blackburn Rovers, who also finished 7th last season. Now, like Millwall, Blackburn missed out on the playoffs on the final day of last season. Despite losing some key players, of course, Brereton Diaz, Bradley Dak has moved on. I think they'll be going for the playoffs once again, but those are some really key players moving on, so it's going to be a question of whether the additions can slot in well. Thomason's brought in a couple of Danish additions. Sondre Tronstad joins from Vitesse Arnhem, and Arnold Sigerson from CSKA Moscow. You've also got winger Niall Ennis from Plymouth, and Tom Bloxham from Tottenham on a free. 19-year-old Adam Morton became a really key player for Blackburn at the end of last season, and he's a really exciting talent which they're going to be looking to shape their team around. I do think with the strength of the rest of the league that it's going to be really hard to push for the playoffs again, so unfortunately I've got them missing out once again. In sixth, we've got Leeds United. Leeds finished 19th in the Premier League last season, in what was a pretty disastrous end to life in the Premier League. Obviously, there's been talks of a takeover looming for a long time, and that's finally been sorted this summer. Now, as you'd expect with a Premier League club, there have been a lot of outgoings, with high owners like Rodrigo moving on. They've still got the likes of Ailing, Harrison, Nonto, and the question is whether those players are going to be sticking around for the course of the season. There's more than enough quality in this squad for Leeds to go back up. Patrick Bamford, if he can actually find fitness again, can easily get 19, 20 goals in the championship. The biggest issue is Leeds just don't know who's going and who's staying. And there's only been one addition, Ethan Ampadu from Chelsea. The main problem for me is when they sacked Bielsa, they lost any form of identity or strategy that they'd actually been building up to under his tenure. If the owners and the manager can instill a new identity, a new strategy, and most importantly, keep the squad aligned, then I think playoffs won't be an issue. In fifth place, I've got Sunderland, who finished sixth last season. Sunderland have done some really good business this summer, bringing in Joe Bellingham from Birmingham, Lewis Semedo from Benfica, and they played a really exciting attacking brand of football last season, all based around young footballers. Ahmed Diallo, who's returned to Man United, his parent club, he's obviously going to be a really big miss, but I really think Sunderland are going to carry on with this momentum. They've got a clear vision now, and there's no reason why they can't go again. At fourth, I've got Coventry City, who finished fifth last season. Now, Coventry obviously lost out to promotion to the Premier League, losing to Luton in the playoff final. But this is a team that's been in and around the playoffs for the last couple of seasons, and I expect them to go again. Obviously, Gear Chorus up front is a big loss, but they've now made £20 million for a player, which for non-parachute clubs is an absolute game changer. £8 million of that has gone on Ellis Sims as a replacement, and to be able to spend that kind of money on a replacement striker, one that's been playing Premier League football last season, is a huge deal for the Championship. As long as they keep hold of Hamer, I think they can comfortably finish in the playoffs again. In third, we have Middlesbrough, who finished fourth last season. Last season saw an absolutely remarkable turnaround under Michael Carrick. He's shown the owners what he can do, and they're backing him. Obviously, they'd like to bring in Cameron Archer again from Villa. Akpom actually had an absolutely brilliant season last season, and it's going to be questions around whether he can recreate that again. But they've recruited really well to replace their low knees. They'll need to tighten up their defence. They conceded 35 goals in 30 games last season, but their addition should take care of that. Although, being a QPR fan, I'm not sure about sending Dean a goal for that job. In second place, we've got Southampton, who finished 20th in the Premier League last season. Russell Martin joins as manager and brings in a very clear identity of football. This squad is just too good for the Championship. They've kept hold of Alcaraz, James Ward Pratt, House. And they've also got Nathan Teller, who was one of the championship's best players last season on loan at Burnley. They're throwing around money that the rest of the championship can't. 15 million on Shea Charles from Man City. And bringing in players who know the league well, like Ryan Manning from Swansea on a free. Even if they lose a player like Ward Prowse, I still think the squad's too good. So I think automatic promotion is a certainty. And in first place, my champions, Leicester City. Leicester finished 18th last season and seemed to just sleepwalk into relegation from the start of the season. Enzo Maresca joins his new manager, another disciple of Pep Guardiola and already in pre-season he's trying the 3-4-2-1 formations but I think Leicester are going to be the Burnley of last season. They can easily spend more money than the rest of the league with their parachute payments and with the money they've made from player sales on Harvey Barnes and James Madison. They've still got Jamie Vardy, Patson Daka, Ikea Nacho, Harry Suter and this is a squad which should be very very comfortable at this level. They've spent eight and a half million on Connor Cody from Wolves and 10 million pounds on Harry Winks from Tottenham. Both players that I'm not particularly inspired by but they have plenty of Premier League experience which is just pulling power that the rest of the championship doesn't have. I'm all for it if we can get one final dance out of Jamie Vardy. Right, that wraps up my predictions. Is there anything you agree with, disagree with? Have I made any howlers? Let me know what you think. And if you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.